Yo, what's good guys? It's Andrew from ProducerSociety.com. Today I'm talking to you about the ambience function in GarageBand. I'm gonna explain exactly what it does as well as some of the differences between reverb and delay. So right off the bat, I'm just gonna lay down the, the, the definition that I had right here. Um, I said, you know, essentially the ambience, it functions as a very, uh, uh, very short reverb. Um, it creates a three-dimensional sound on the track through the use of, as I just said, this very short reverb sound. Um, you know, a consequence of this is that it's the, the sound tends to sound a bit thicker and a bit wider and also a little more atmospheric. So, you know, this is contrasted to the reverb setting, which, you know, when you crank the reverb as much as possible, it sounds like the sound is reverberating through a much larger room. You know, you can hear the sound waves crashing around in the room. You know, let's say, for example, a church. You know, it's crashing off the pews, it's crashing off the uh, the walls, the floors, the ceilings, it's traveling all around. And that's essentially what reverb is, just like the way these sound waves are bouncing off everything in the room. And, um, you know, that's why when you use a, a reverb plug-in or a reverb uh, pedal or what have you, you know, you might have settings that are, uh, that, uh, that are named after certain rooms. So you might have like long haul reverb, church reverb, uh, nightclub reverb, uh, warehouse uh, reverb, you know, and so on and so forth. But this, this is different from ambiance. You know, ambiance is like, you know, it, it's uh, rather than being like the length of the room and like how it's crash, how those sound waves are crashing around in the room, the ambiance is just like a very short reverb. And it kind of like, it just thickens up the sound a little bit and makes it a little more atmospheric. So you can use it on a lot of stuff. But before I talk to you about that, I'm actually going to I'm going to show you what it does. Um, I think uh, it's really worth mentioning to to show that like the, the ambiance function, it also kind of has the the effect of spreading the sound waves across the stereo image. And what I mean by that is, uh, let's say you have your headphones plugged in right now, which I hope you do for this, or I hope you're just using a proper stereo system. But anyway, like when you play, when you play a classic electric or piano right now, for instance, like what I'm gonna do right here, you can hear that the sound is panned directly in the center, right? But if you crank the ambiance all the way to 10, now let's, now let's listen to the way it changes the sound. Now I'm gonna turn it back off. By the way, I got a present for you. Go to producersociety.com slash free mixing cheat sheet. That'll put you on my list to get a free mixing cheat sheet. And I send all kinds of cool tips and stuff that I don't share anywhere else. You can also join my forum at forum.producersociety.com. Um, for now, it's totally free to sign up, but uh, in the future, I'll probably lock it down and then turn it into a full course platform. So you, you can see how the, it's, it sounds like it's spreading it across the two channels more evenly. And that's kind of what it does. You know what I mean? Like it's not a reverb per se. It's just like, it's just like, like I've already said it a few times now, but it, it's almost just like it's spreading it out and like making it more spacious and like ambient. It's making it more ambient. Um, so that's essentially what it's doing. And you can use it for a number of things. You know, you can use it for vocals. You can use it for guitars. I use some, I show you some of the settings that I have here. Um, for the bass and, and so on and so forth. Um, what's another thing I should mention to you? I mean, that's pretty much it. Like that's the definition right there. It's, uh, I, I explained it well at the end of the article as well. I said, you know, the ambiance setting, it functions essentially like a very short reverb and it creates somewhat of an ambiguous and three dimensional effect that's more defined, thicker and more atmospheric in contrast to the reverb which appears to control the type of room in which the sounds reverberate. So that sounds like a mouthful, but to me that sentence sounds like, I don't know, man, I, I think it's, it can't be any more legit than that. It, uh, it's really describing the differences, at least to my ear and at least to how I look at things. Now, maybe perhaps, uh, you know, a, a more like a, a hardcore educated engineer would say, no, that's not it. And, you know, I, I could be wrong. But ultimately, that's the way it sounds to me. That's that's what it sounds like it's doing. You can't find much more uh, information on this function online because I'm pretty sure it's unique to GarageBand as well. But uh, anyway, yeah, that's it for this video. I hope this explained to you what this function does. And uh, I guess I will see you in the next one. All right, peace.